why do we want to study partial differential equations or PDEs? Aren't ordinary differential equations already complicated enough? Well, yes, certainly. And PDEs are even more complicated. However, modeling physical problems often leads naturally to PDEs. So if we want to solve our applied problems, we often need to solve these PDEs. There is a plus though. Many physical problems lead to the same types of PDEs. Three types are very common. The heat equation, the wave equation and the Laplace equation. In this video, you will learn what the heat equation is and how it is derived from basic principles. So let's take a look. Suppose we have some rod with some area A and length L. And let us describe the temperature in the rod as a function u of x and t. u is the, x is the coordinate along the rod. Suppose now we take some small segment here uh, between x1 and x2. Then we are going to look at the uh, energy balance in this small uh, segment of the rod. So what do we have? What is the energy in this small segment between x1 and x2? Well, the DE, because we consider x1 and x2 to be very close together, is S, the specific heat, times rho, the density, times u, the temperature, times dv, its volume. The S has a, a, a unit joule per kilogram uh, Kelvin, times density, kilogram per cubic meter, will give us a joule per cubic meter Kelvin, times the Kelvin will give us a joule per cubic meter, times the cubic meter will give us a joule, which is indeed the correct unit. So that is the energy within this small segment. Now energy will flow in and out via a so-called flux Q, uh, where the flux Q is the amount of joule, which is joules, the amount of energy flowing through the area over here, given in units joule per uh, square meter second. So the total amount of energy flowing out through this segment equals uh, the Q times A, the, its area. Now we can make a balance because the total uh, energy is the uh, triple integral over the uh, entire segment of the DE, which was S rho U dV. Well, it's symmetric along the uh, y and z directions, that just gives us the area A, and we are left with the integral over x from x1 to x2 of S times rho times u. So that's the total amount of energy. What is the change of energy? Well, the dE dt is the amount of energy flowing in over here, so A times Q at x1, minus the total amount of energy flowing out here, which is the area A times the Q at x2. And we want to equate, so we are going to write this part as an integral. Uh, so we, uh, how do, can we do that? Well, we compute uh, dq dx and then we integrate. Both uh, operations cancel out, of course, but in this way we can turn our dE dt also into an integral over x. And here we are. Then we know our dE dt, our rate of change of energy, will be the ddt of the energy, which is over here, which is this term, which will be uh, energy flowing in minus energy flowing out, which we got over here. Now, then we can turn everything into one integral. Of course, we can just cancel out the factors A. So we get the integral from x1 to x2, take the ddt in of s rho the u dt plus dq dx equals zero. Now, uh, x1 and x2 are general, you can pick any x1 and x2 as you like, and if this integral is zero for any x1 and x2s, that means that the integrand has to be equal to zero. So our energy balance leads to the following equation for u, s rho du dt plus dq dx equals zero. But now still, uh, there is an unknown function q. So next step, we have to express our flux q in terms of u. For that, we use the law of Fourier, which says that the energy, the heat flow, 
is uh, in the other direction of the temperature gradient. So heat flows from warm to cold, which agrees with our intuition. So Q is some uh, uh, constant kappa times minus the gradient of the temperature. So in our case, that becomes Q equals minus kappa du dx. So if we plug that in over here, uh, we get the minus kappa du dx over there. And uh, then we can solve for uh, du dt. Du dt is a bunch of constants times the second derivative of u with respect to x squared. And this, those constants over here, they are all positive, so are they are lumped in a new constant alpha squared uh, to, well, to emphasize that we have a positive co constant over there. And there we have our heat equation. Du dt is a positive constant times second derivative of u with respect to x squared. And it is a partial differential equation because we have not only a differenti differentiation with respect to t, but we also have a derivative with respect to another variable, with respect to x. So here you see how a partial differential equation arrives naturally, say, from some 